This is the penultimate celebrity master chef and aid Les and Janet only have a few challenges left to prove themselves. I never in a million years thought I'd get as far as this. I've got to believe that I can be that person that can win Celebrity MasterChef. I haven't really won anything before. My wife has won a load of things and our mantelpiece is full of kind of BAFTAs and it'd be very nice just to get a little MasterChef trophy and put it up there, maybe in the middle. Well, I'm pleased I've got this far, I really am, because if I wasn't here, there'd be no women in the final and that'd be shocking. From 16 celebrities, we have whistled it down to these great three. Next time, one of them will be crowned champion. Today, the three finalists will be entering the world of fine dining when they finally get to cook at this year's chef's table. When it comes to fine dining, it's a speciality. You've got to have certain skill sets. I hope that I can raise my game and accept that challenge. But first, they're going to have to cook John Turode's rabbit three ways an offal stuffed loin, pan-fried fillets, and ravioli stuffed with rabbit shoulder. Really, this is about taking on a dish and understanding all the processes. What ends up on the plate is flavour and rabbit. We now have our final three. It's time for them to really step it up. First, they will need to butcher the rabbit. Then braise the shoulder and legs in a pressure cooker. Drop your bouquet garni in and add to that a good amount of white wine. Now 500 mils of stock. Pig's trotter, and that gives you viscosity, thickness to your sauce. So we're going to add that into our pot. That's going to make meat for your ravioli, yes. meat for your Swiss chard, yes. and the base of it's going to be your sauce. That's right. Right, OK. Yeah. Next, the fillet has to be removed from the loin. Now, that is really tricky. Removing those little fillets and then taking that backbone out is tough. That's right. Really hard. Then the loin is stuffed with the liver and kidneys and wrapped in pancetta. Now, roll the whole thing up again. I brown the loin in the pan, and now it's going to go in the oven and it's going to take 12 to 15 minutes to cook. So now we're going to make the parsnip puree. Peeled parsnips, so 100 mils of olive oil. 100 mils of milk onto the heat and bring it to boil. There's loads here to do, it's really confusing. Now, we're going to do some chopped chestnuts as a garnish. And this is simply chestnuts fried in lots and lots of butter and with sherbel and black pepper. We've got legs going on, we've got parsnip puree going on, we've got the loin roasting, we've got chestnuts in butter. Now what? Now we're going to crumb the little fillets, roll them first in our seasoned chestnut flour, and then into egg, and then breadcrumb. This is the most complicated recipe we've given them so far. It is. So now the sauce. So I'm going to strain off my sauce, my stock that I've made with my rabbit, into a pot. Add to that red wine. and a half bottle of port. If you reduce this sauce too much, it's had it. Not enough, and it's too thin. That rabbit is going to be drunk. <laughs> While the sauce reduces, the braised shoulder meat is prepped for the ravioli filling. So now a small amount of filling into each one, and fold them over. Ravioli in, and whilst the ravioli's in, 
bring the rabbit out. Yeah, look at that. So there you go. Now we're going to start to build the dish. And you have to have a clear vision of how this dish is going to look before you start. So parsnips. And our chestnuts. Oh, look at that. John, it's beautiful, mate. Ah! Mm. Oh. Ah! Oh. 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 There we go. Rabbit and chestnuts. That's beautiful. Every single part of the rabbit has been used in that dish. Leg, shoulder, loin, liver, kidneys. That is complicated. That's a real step up from what they've been doing. It's technical, it's highly skilled, and there's lots of process. This is going to be fascinating. Yeah. Let's get them in. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the world of fine dining. And today, you have a job because we've given you a recipe that incorporates many processes and many techniques. It needs to be sharp, articulate, delicious. One of you is going to be our champion. Everything you now do is going to be under the closest scrutiny. Good luck, two hours, let's cook. It's confusing, but I'm just gonna take it a stage at a time, see if we get there. I don't understand what the end result is. It's got chestnuts on the pasta, and then it's got the red wine sauce. I need a pen. There's a massive, massive amount to take in. Very daunted by it. You can feel the intensity of this task because the silence in this kitchen is deafening. Three rabbit dishes, three celebrity chefs, I can promise you three very different looking plates of food. Now, the words fine dining seem to me to be some uptight experience. It comes out and you are supposed to fall down in ecstasy at what it looks like and photograph it and tell all your friends you had it and it cost 120 quid. But I'm not going to do something unless I do it 100%. I'll take everything seriously and you don't mess with me. Janet, the rabbit's all right for you because you already cooked some rabbit for us at a medieval banquet. Yeah, when I did that, I had to bone 16 rabbits in a very, very short space of time. I think that the way that John's asking me to bone it is far more fiddly than I would normally do, but now we're doing the high-end version. Do you understand the recipe? I'll give it a go. If the whole thing at the end of it tastes brilliant, well, then it's worth it. Which bit of the dish are you most worried about? I make pasta, but I don't make ravioli. But I'm assuming I'll just remember from some crevice of my pensioner brain. Janet may say that she doesn't approve of fine dining, but she's going to give this task everything she's got. I'm not sure about her with a classic sauce. I'm also not sure about her with ravioli. We are now really testing Janet. 30 minutes have gone. Hour and a half left. I'm slightly worried about the idea that we have to step it up to a kind of another level of gastronomic brilliance. The tricky bit is not just kind of making food tastier by throwing a load of stuff in, but throwing exactly the right stuff in. How do you feel about this, Aid? Well, I've never done that to a rabbit before. You shouldn't be able to 
go very badly wrong if you follow a recipe, should you? You've got to make ravioli here. You've also got to make a very good classic red wine sauce. Have I? Yeah. I haven't read that far ahead. That's, have you, have that sounds interesting. Have you made a ravioli? Um, I, well, I've made sheets of pasta. Right. So ravioli is just putting two sheets together, isn't it, with something in the middle? Did you expect to make it to the final three, Aid? Of course I did. You did, didn't you? <laughs> you did. Are you better than the other two? Janet's a worry. Uh, not just as a chef. <laughs> Les is finding it hard to breathe. I think I'm running up along the rail. Right now, for Aid, he's starting to realise how much stuff he's got to get together to make sure everything goes on the plate. As calm as he was, I think now the pressure has got to him. One hour to go. Seems a fair amount of work still to do. It hasn't been an easy journey. It starts off so badly for me. And then to be here, to suddenly produce food that I didn't think I could produce, has been a real thrill. Les, are you going to get this done? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. How do you feel about it? At first, I was in a blind panic. Butchery, fine dining, all those skills. But now I'm with some vegetables and stuff. Seems a bit friendlier. But I don't know about timings. What's been the most difficult part so far? Just seeing that rabbit there and knowing that it had to be butchered, you know? When you walked in this kitchen for the first time, did you expect to be in the final three? <laughs> not, not in a million years. You know that I didn't expect to be in the final three. It's just that kind of, oh, you know, do I deserve to be here? That's always the way I am. So it means that I'm feeling the fear and doing it anyway. But, um, but it doesn't mean it isn't fearful. Well done, Liz. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Les today has gone back to old Les who can't breathe. <sighs> I want him to breathe because I believe in him. To an actual fact, Les is more ahead than anybody else in the room. He is more ahead than he thinks he is. Guys, right now you should be doing your last job. It's going to take you about six minutes to put this plate together. Three minutes left, please. Get the stuff on your plates. You've got just two minutes. You've got to get it on a plate. Rabbit, veg, ravioli, sauces. On you go. Final touches. That's it. Your time's up. OK, bring your plates up. So the recipe I gave you was rabbit three ways with chestnuts. You had a loin of rabbit, which has been filled with its offal and wrapped in bacon, parsnip puree, a ravioli filled with rabbit shoulder, then you had chestnuts themselves being scattered on the outside with pumpkin and a red wine sauce with Swiss chard and bits of the leg. I think you three have done amazing jobs. I really do. All right, Aid, let John have a look at yours first. I quite like your presentation. Not bad at all. Nice. You got an issue with the sauce? It smells like sort of burnt onions, which is a real shame. But what I do love is the inside of that ravioli. Heady with sage, sweet with carrot, and that lovely rabbit meat in the middle of it. Really, really nice indeed. Everything done, everything accomplished in the time, really pleased for you. Good job. Shame about your sauce. Yeah. It tastes good. Every bit of it tastes good. I actually don't mind the sauce with that little bit of bitterness at the end. Really love your rabbit with the offal in the middle. And there's a, a real hint of garlic in there as well. Good job. Good job.
Thank you. As we were walking up with our three plates, I, I looked at the other two and I thought, do you know what, I think I've won this round. I thought they might forgive the sauce and crown me the winner immediately. Janet? This is your weak point, the presentation. Do you know what, Greg? For the first time in my life, I'm actually going to agree with you. I don't believe you can eat all that as a main course. I don't know. I eat a lot. I eat huge amounts. Oh. You cook so well, Janet. I wish I lived next door to you. Actually, I'm almost done. <laughs> i tell you what, some of this stuff on there is absolutely peachy lovely. Peachy lovely. The rabbit with the offal and the bacon, that's good because the, the rabbit's still soft. And I like that iron richness you get from the offal. The ravioli with the bits of uh, chestnut on the top are just heavenly. They're sweet, they're nicely seasoned, they're soft, they're moist. Your puree is as creamy as you like. You could spread it on top of a carrot cake. You've got crunch in your chard. Your sauce is rich and fruity. Janet, for crying out loud, <laughs> stop telling us off and make it look pretty. I know, I know, I know. I agree with Greg. It's a great job. It's a great job. If I could eat it from underneath a cloth so I didn't have to look at it, brilliant, I'd be really happy. <laughs> How are you feeling, Janet? OK. I actually agree with a lot of what you said. I just put too much food on the plate, so, yeah, I have actually said sorry, I agree with you. Cool, I've been but out I said it quite quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and she kept her fingers crossed. <laughs> One meat, three different ways. Only a chef would think of that. Any challenge I'm up for, as long as I don't have the last word. <laughs> Right, Les, let's move on to you. Mr Dennis, don't dribble the sauce over your rabbit. It's a beautiful cylinder of rabbit, all there on show. You chuck the sauce over the top and it looks like it's bleeding. Les, your sauce is nothing short of marvellous. Thank you. Absolutely marvellous. Spicy, sweet, very rich with that wonderful rabbit. The ravioli is delicious and sweet. I love the crispiness that's come from those fried chestnuts alongside the ravioli. Your rabbit's a little bit under. Right. Um, and your Swiss chard needs a lot more seasoning. You can do this, you know, Les. OK. You've got to have just a big injection of confidence. Yes. You're here in the final three. I know, I know. You've got to believe it, mate. Yeah. We don't put you through just to make up the numbers, because remember, mate, we've got to eat it. Yeah. OK? We've got to eat your food, and we know you can do it. We know you can do it really well. You have the best flavoured rabbit wrapped in bacon I've tasted, the best sauce by far out of the three. It's got a sheen to it that's incredible. At your best, you can take on anyone, but I think you've got to believe you can take on anyone. Funny that there are schoolboy errors on here and at the same time some of the best cooking in the room, which I suppose may sum you up completely, Les. <laughs> we asked 100 people, the least likely finalists in Celebrity <laughs> MasterChef. Our survey said, if he's there, I'll give you the money myself. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Cheers, Les. At my best, I have the ability to win this. Did I just say that? Yes, I did. I've got to start believing it. They said it, I've got to start believing it. Well done, thank you very much. They're good, John. Say what they are, very, very good, all three of them. Now I've left there, I've remembered the last time I did something like that. And it was in about 1974. <laughs> I cooked a partridge three ways.
Do you know I think this is the toughest we've ever been on a group of celebs, and they've risen to every single challenge. That was a tough dish, really complicated, lots of process, and they all got stuck in. At one stage in here, there was just steely silence as the three of them had their heads down, and all you could hear was their hearts thumping. Nothing else. Janet knows what she's got to do. Janet knows, and she was disappointed today. She realised that actually she could have done a little bit better. Aid is a good cook, shame about his sauce, but he actually ends up with a decent dish. There is absolutely nothing wrong with Les Dennis that a spoonful of confidence wouldn't cure. Oh, I think it needs to be more than a spoonful of confidence. A bucket of confidence. I think a bucket of confidence, absolutely. An articulated lorry full of confidence. Maybe. Next challenge is massive. But I believe our three are up to it. It's the morning of the chef's table. Aid, Les and Janet are heading to Rue at Parliament Square. Where in just over three hours, they will be serving lunch to four of Britain's most respected Michelin-starred chefs. And the chef in charge today is 2009 professional MasterChef champion, Steve Groves. The style of food's modern European. We have very classical foundations to our cooking, but we like to have a modern interpretation of that. Our contestants cooking Steve Grove's menu for four invited Michelin star chefs. Doesn't get bigger, most certainly doesn't get tougher. Cooking for Michelin star chefs. I'm rather worried. <laughs> it takes quite a lot to throw me. What is intimidating is achieving this pinnacle of perfection in the presentation. This is such an experience that we are being given, so I'm looking forward to it. These are my dishes, so I want them to be executed perfectly. It's daunting for me, let alone for them. Morning, we've got some real big industry leaders in today for lunch, so... I really hope you guys can do me proud. I want you guys to step up to the mark. If you'd like to follow me, we'll get started. So, Aid, you're going to be in charge of the starter. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, roasted longestine consomme with some beautiful Welsh prawns, coastal vegetables, and a prawn boudin. Prawn boudin? What's that? Prawn boudin's a, it's a sausage, basically, right. essentially. So a white sausage made of prawn. That sounds complicated. So when it comes to time to serve, you're going to need to roast your longestine. You just arrange the longestines just around. The prawns have just been peeled. They go on raw. Raw? Yeah. So when we pour the hot consomme in at the table, that cooks that would just lightly poach them. Yeah. Just the food down out. And then you start arranging some of your sea vegetables. This mm -hmm. one's called stone crop. And then this one's called monk's beard. Try and keep them kind of coming up as if they're growing. Over here, this is a, an oil made from the longestine shells. Use a modified tapioca starch, which just absorbs that oil, so it turns it into a powder. Oh, wow. So it's, it's, like dissolve, space dust. Yeah. it's like sea flavoured space dust. It will dissolve when the consomme goes on. These are the crackers, which are made from a prawn stock, some tapioca, which we cook out, dehydrate, and then fry. That's how your dish will go to the table. Mm -hmm. And then at the table, the waiting staff will pour the consomme on. All right. Quite a challenging dish. You've got to make a beautifully clear consomme. You don't want tough longestines. You don't want tough boudin. Well, it looks quite complex to me. 
All the information you need to make this dish is in here. You've got three hours. It's going to be difficult. I'm not going to tell you any different, but it is definitely doable. Good luck. Thank you. See you in three hours, then. Yes. <laughs> I've never made a consomme, I've never made a mousseline. So there's some learning to be done and some effort to be put in. But first of all, I'm just going to have another little taste. Mm. Nice. Right. OK, so Janet, you're in charge of the main course, which is Herdwick lamb in three ways. And we've got some courgettes, some black garlic, and some rosemary on there. So it's lamb three different ways? It is, yeah. All right, I'm on, I'm on message now. Lamb three different ways. Can I see? Have you got a photo of what it looks like? I'm going gonna, gonna to make one of the dishes up, yeah. and then you'll see how it looks. Because at the moment, and then you can do you know what this looks like? Origami. OK, when you come to plating, the black garlic puree just gets brushed along the plate. Then your loin piece, or your belly piece, sorry, goes on. Lamb and courgette ball comes out. Should be very delicate with this. Yeah. That gets popped on the end. Your vegetable's just going to run through the middle. The loin piece, so that just sits on the edge there. And then, just before it goes, a little bit of the lamb sauce, and then that's your finished dish. So, we need five portions of this. Perfectly replicated. I have faith. I've cooked all the elements. I don't, obviously, I haven't made the origami uh, ping pong ball out of whatever it is, but I speak English and that's talking to me in Urdu. You've got the main course, the yeah. centrepiece of the whole meal. Yes. How do you feel about that? Well, I don't know, because assembling it is the tricky thing. Right at the last minute. At pace. Well, I've only got to do five. It's not like I've got to do 105. With a smile. <laughs> Les is in charge of Steve's dessert. Chocolate Delice, filled with a liquid caramel centre, decorated with chocolate shards. It's all about the preparation in this one. If you get all the elements right... Yep. When it gets to the end, it's just a case of assembling it. Assembling, OK. But it is quite fiddly. It takes a bit of time. Beautiful. So once you've filled the top, yeah. it's just a case of a little crumb around the outside. This one is aerated chocolate. And yep. then that will be your finished dessert. As it goes to the table, when they cut into it, the liquid centre should ooze out. OK. It's very important that you get yourself organised. We've had to freeze it to get the shape right. and to dress okay. it. It needs to defrost before it's eaten. OK. It's beautiful. Right. Thank you very much. You confident? Uh, yes, chef. <laughs> <laughs> I am. That is beautiful. Really stunning. But a lot of elements there, which I'm going to have to get on with, clearly. So here we go. Aid's first job is to make the seafood consomme for his starter. Many chefs will mess up a consomme. So for an amateur chef to come in and do that, it's going to be very difficult. They have to make sure it's perfectly clear. If it's not, it will just look murky and disgusting. There's a process in the consomme which involves egg white. The egg white makes it go clear. I don't know how. And I don't know the method. So that's... The, that's... Just a little worry up, up, up ahead. Smells nice. It smells lovely. Everything smells nice over here. <laughs> it really does. Aid looks like he's enjoying himself, but he lives and dies by the clarity and quality of the consomme. Consomme looks a bit thick at the moment. <laughs> Janet begins by braising the diced lamb shanks, which will be used as stuffing for the intricate courgette balls. Janet and presentation are not happy bedfellows. And, John, this thing today has not only got to look as sexy as, it's got to be precise. Does that sound like Janet? 
My buttocks are clenched, my lips are pursed. I am under control. She then starts to prep the lamb loin. I butchered it. Yeah, you butchered it, right? Oh, no, no, no. Well, there isn't there enough of it, it's all right. Um, it. I'm sure we can get the portions out from the ends. Yeah. I've cut it off the bone, scored it, and apparently I've scored it a little bit too deeply, but you know what? For someone who's doing it for the first time, it was OK. So, roll the pin as thin as you can, yeah? If it's too thick, it'll set really hard. Right, OK. With so many elements to the dessert, Les starts by rolling out the chocolate paste for the base. I'm getting ready to make these foiletine discs. Basically, I've got to roll this as thinly as possible, cut in two and place in the chiller until set, which will be about two minutes. I don't know whether it's a good or bad thing to give the responsibility of the dessert to Les Dennis. He has had triumphs with his dessert. He's also had dishes bordering on nightmares when it comes to sweet stuff. To ask him to put a chocolate dessert together filled with caramel is really, really hard. Chef, is that thin enough? You want to go as thin as you possibly can, because... So even thinner than that? Yeah. yeah. It's amazing how you think you've got it thin enough and then there's still a way to go. Back on starters, Aid now has the challenging task of making the unique nori and longustine powder. I'm roasting these off for that strange little powdery oil stuff that goes on top that it transforms into flavour when you put liquid on it. Aid takes the oil and slowly adds tapioca starch. It will absorb to form the finished powder. What are you making? I'm making that kind of weird powder. Interesting. It's like prawn cloud. Yeah, cloud of prawn. Steve? Yeah? Is, it, is that what you're looking for? Yeah, that's it. Aid, you're on starters, so you kick off the whole shooting match. Very important job, I think. Have you attempted food at anywhere near this, this, this level of complexity? No, I've never done, for example, that. What is it? It's a kind of uh, powder that when you pull the consomme on it, it instantly melts. It's fish space dust. That's what I'm calling it. Has he bought it in or does he make it here? I made it! I made it! Out so, of what? It took me bloody ages. Oh, my word, this is even more complicated than I thought, eh? Oh, yes. How sure are you that you're going to be able to pull it off? I'm pretty sure it'll happen. So does Aid MasterChef champion Edmondson sound good to you? It's nice of you to say it so soon. <laughs> There's me, John, and a few Michelin star chefs to get past first. Is there? All right. With 90 minutes gone, Janet's peeling the black garlic for her puree. You could get prisoners in here to do this. I'm just in the black hole of a work area where you've got to peel eight heads of black, stinky garlic. I don't know what time or what day it is. Back on dessert, Les is making the chocolate delice that will encase the caramel. He has to slowly emulsify egg yolk with olive oil. Apparently, this is the trickiest bit so far. I'm sure there'll be trickier bits yet. The measurements are crucial. If you get too much of one thing, then it's not going to be right. It's split. Didn't drizzle in too little at a time. Got a bit um, ahead of myself. Les has just got to calm down a little bit. He gets in a flap, he starts to panic, and then he rushes things, and that's when it all goes wrong. OK, so literally, just basically repeat the process. Right. That's, imagine that's your oil, that's your new egg, egg yolk, and just right. it should come together. 
So now we're rescuing it by adding the mixture that I've made to some more egg yolks. In 45 minutes, the first course has to leave the kitchen, OK? With his longustine powder made and the consomme clarifying, Aid now starts to make the tricky prawn boudin. It has to be like a smooth sausage of flavour rather than the recognisable constituent parts. It's a question of hiding where it came from. Well, that's an incredible amount of effort for a very small amount of stuff. <sighs> He then adds cream and egg whites to the prawn mix. So that is done. And pipes it onto cling film ready to be poached. So see now you're getting the shape in. Yeah. It's going to give you a nice even neat piece. Having braised the diced lamb shank, Janet wraps it in garlic leaves. Janet, you've got one hour. Do you know what? Time's lost all meaning in here. She now has to tackle the dreaded courgette lattice that will go around them. I don't think Janet realises quite how much she's got left to do. The courgette balls could be the one thing that's really infuriating and takes time. If you use the uh, stick, you can lift them all up at once. Is that near enough? Yeah. Come on, push yourself. Tighten it up. Now I'll put the ball... Round side down. Perfect. Yeah, then I cut that. Yeah. Pull up your corners. Keep it nice and tight. Pull the cling film so you kind of squeeze out as much air as you can. OK, now use that cling film to tie it. Lovely. Is that so, right? Yeah. So now you just need another... Three. Three more. OK, guys, we're serving the first course in half an hour. We need to pick up the pace a bit. With time running out, Aid begins to portion his poached boudin. It's a little bit undercooked. It's not quite holding together. Is that whole one ruined? Just re-roll that bit and pop it back in. I think you'll have enough anyway, but... Aid's had a bit of a problem with his prawn boudin. It wasn't quite cooked properly, so we've got that back in to cook. He seems quite on top of it. He's got most of the things that he needs ready to go. He just needs to get himself organised. Meanwhile, Les begins to construct his dessert. First, he cuts the feuilletine base. Come on. Then he needs to quickly get the frozen caramel out of the moulds. OK, so you need to work quickly now. OK, while well, they're still frozen. Yeah. Yeah, OK. One in the centre of each. Come on, Les. Les does seem to be working quite nervously. This is a dish where, when it all comes together, you have to work very quickly because the liquid centre in the chocolate dish melts so quickly. Next, he pipes the chocolate de lis around it, encasing the caramel. Step up the pace a little bit. He only has seconds to do it before the frozen caramel melts and leaks out. If you don't get it into the moulds, levelled off very quickly, then it's going to start to leak out, and that starts to happen. But we need to move, because you can see it's where it's starting to ooze okay. through. Right. And once you get to that point, there's not really any going back, because it's the case you have to start the whole dish again. So I'd maybe give up on that one. Just okay, squeeze just a bit these. more into these, okay. so we can seal them off, because otherwise you're not going to have the five right, that you need. Okay. Yeah. So smooth them off. Smooth them off. Very quickly. Yeah. Obviously, the longer they're out, the more it's going to melt. OK, sorry, sir. OK, in the fridge. We think it's possibly salvageable. The danger is um, I won't know until we are very close to service. Thank you so much. 
Am I expecting restaurant standard food? Absolutely, of course. And it's all going to be about the detail. Devil's in the detail today. When you're cooking for a chef and you're not a chef, it's always a challenge. I'm hungry, I haven't had breakfast, so I'm really looking forward to it. My food has to be spot on. Aid, you got 10 minutes until the starter has to go. So your consomme should be on, warming up, should be ready to roast your longestine, and then we can get set up, ready to serve. Cooking for chefs of the calibre today, there's no hiding place. They know what they're looking for when they taste food. They'll spot any mistake. How you doing, Aid? I'm under pressure. But you're loving it, though, aren't you? No, yeah. Not at this precise minute. It's a bit scary, actually. It is a bit scary. Moment of truth. I think the hardest thing is the starter, in my opinion. Whenever somebody puts consomme and something like prawn boda to go with that, they really push the boat out. <gasps> Look at that! OK, so while those are in heating up, just come up to the pass and start placing what you've got already. Fast and precise, Aid, come on. It's looking good. So keep going, nearly there. That's lovely, look at that. Beautiful. OK, consomme into a jug. Looks amazing, Aid. That's perfect. Just coming off the centre, to the edge of the plate. As soon as you've got the powder on, give the plate a wipe, and then we send it. Ready to go? Perfect. Service. Thank you very much. Well done. That was fun. That was a tough that. dish. Done very well. Enjoyed that. That was good. I mean, I've always appreciated what goes on in restaurants, but I think I appreciate it just a little bit more today. Aid has made roasted longustine consommé served with a prawn boudin, longustine and nori powder, tapioca crackers and coastal vegetables. For me, presentation-wise, it looks absolutely stunning. Very simple, very clean. The consommé is very clear. Beautiful smell of shellfish, which you, you know those flavours are going to come through. The langstein's a little touch overcooked for me. The boudin's really nice and soft. The flavour of uh, shellfish and the consomme was just amazing. Spot on. I, I loved it. I would be happy to pay for that. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to eat it because of my shellfish allergy. Visually looks stunning. Flavour-wise, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Oh, nice one, Tom. We'll have that. Yeah, yeah get in there. <laughs> yeah. I, I'll swap that for a lamb main course. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Aid Edmondson, Michelin starred chef. That's really delicious, really delicious. What I love is the fragrance of it. That powder inside is amazing. It's enhanced. It's incredible. And the consommé, crystal clear. Bang on the money, Mr. Aid. Hello, chaps. Hi. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Enjoying your tea? <laughs> <laughs> that was a very difficult. Dish to do. I have to say that I really enjoyed that. Fair play. I mean, if I know you can cook like that, knowing you live up the road, I might need to <laughs> call on you on a Saturday night. <laughs> well, I know these guys have been saying that the langoustine was slightly overcooked, but for me, it was perfectly cooked. I really enjoyed it. I like you. <laughs> <laughs> I was very, very impressed. You, know, you should be very proud of yourself because mm. that's a challenging dish. Well done. Well, I enjoyed well, it. Thank you. Well done. Cheers. I'm feeling uh, rather elated, feeling quite high. It's quite nice. I think they genuinely seem to like it. And they should have done. <laughs> it was blooming tasty. OK, Janet. 
We're meant to be up in five minutes. These take eight minutes to cook, and we've still not made them all now. I'd say we're going to be around 15 minutes late. I think time is quite hard with Janet, but we need to get this food out because people are waiting. The, food that they make, is going to be delayed for 10 minutes. Ten OK, minutes. Ten, minutes. Right, 10 minutes. Well, well tell him I've got a train to catch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With Janet running late, Steve steps in to finish the courgette balls. Are we serving lunch today, Janet, or dinner? Don't even start gobbling at me, OK? You're running late. Now, hurry up. This dish sure. is the equivalent Shh. of building the Eiffel Tower. Well, I mean, guys, I love lamb. It's one of my favourite meats. And there might be several little compositions going on here. Can they get each one right and, and execute it well? Technically, again, something very difficult. It's going to be pushing them to the limits, I would have thought. That's lovely. How long, Janet? I've got to start assembling in a minute. She's late, isn't she? She's really late. Well, she's 20 minutes late now. Just lost the sight of time. She's got to put on the plate, yeah? Let's get everything up and we'll come back for the sauce, OK? First thing's to brush it in a nice line, OK? Across there. Let's try and make it perfect. Let's get the rest of them done. Where does the belly go? It goes at right angles. Just. Hurry up. OK, we need to get a little bit faster, yeah? Big push now. It'll be over in a couple of minutes. That's it. Lovely. Look at that. Come on. So oh, come stop on. it! I'm trying to get it right! Don't put me off! Stunning dish. Splendid! Look at that. Now what? Sauce. Sauce. That's it, lovely. OK, service. Well done, Janet. Stay. We took Hi. our time, but it looked all right. It looks lovely. Uh, I'd be happy to serve that. It took a bit longer than they expected, but you would hardly expect me to be able to build a Rolls Royce in five minutes, would you? Janet's dish is Herdwick lamb three ways. Belly, loin and lamb shank stuffed courgette balls, served with broad beans, baby courgettes and a black garlic puree. Visually, this looks brilliant. Mm. I, think, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. It smells coming from the plate of beautiful, you're just saying that because this is something you can actually eat. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking <laughs> at you're yeah, thinking... How cool, how cool is the courgette thing? Cool. I'm looking at it going, that is cool. For me, I thought the dish was phenomenal. Incredible bit of cookery. All the flavours married together look really, really good. Beautiful vegetable cookery. Really, really enhanced the dish. For me, I, 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 I thought that was an incredible dish. Brilliant. The best thing is that, that courgette was not overcooked. It was perfectly done. I, I really loved it. That was very, very nice. So I didn't talk too much when I was eating that. I'm a big lamb fan. All three bits of lamb are cooked beautifully, but the star of the show to me is that belly that is soft and sticky and salty. I mean, well done, Janet, but timekeeping all over the place. It has to be noted. And let's just remember one thing. This dish is done by Janet. Look at the presentation. She finally got the presentation right. Hello. Hi, Janet. Hello. 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 You, right? you ate it all? Yeah. <laughs> As you can see, we didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you eat it because you were so starving because you had to wait so long? We all felt that it was a wonderful dish. The attention to detail and the vegetable, the quality of the cooking there, 
was just a delight and it was worth waiting for, so well done. Thanks very much. This was a dish that I would happily eat in any Michelin-style restaurant. You really have done yourself very proud. I thought it was phenomenal, phenomenal bit of cooking. Thank well done. You. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm glad that's over. It's now time for Les to plate his dessert. But there's a problem, as the caramel has leaked out, ruining the chocolate delice. I'm not happy to serve these two. There's a big hole in this one. Mm -hmm. And this one, where the chocolate's sunk in, I can see that the liquid centre's run out. So three of these desserts might be salvageable. It's difficult to say until we demold it, because the liquid centre might run out. It could mean failure for the whole dessert. Les has really messed up. Now, Chef, he reckons he might rescue two, possibly three. But there is not going to be four for the chefs, and it's definitely not going to be one for you and I to taste. John, that's a disaster. Let's construct these three, make them as good as we can, and let's see if we can get three, three desserts perfect out. desserts out. OK. I should have just piped quicker and had the confidence to pipe quicker, and I didn't. One. Next one. That's another one that's worked. Okay, that's three. Excuse me, gentlemen. Uh, the dessert is gonna be served in five minutes, but unfortunately, it's gonna be just three plates because there have been a problem in the kitchen. Chocolate's a difficult thing to work with, guys. I mean, that all needs to be beautifully presented. Timing, crucial. Just take your time and get it right. And I'll maybe start using the tweezers. Calm yourself down. Just need to take your time. Yeah. Just make sure it's immaculate, yeah? Chef, is that OK? Are you wiping cloth? We done? Yeah. Well done. Well done, Les. Well done. Thank you, Chef. Yeah. Thank you so much. Well done. That was a tough challenge, but you got three desserts up and they look yeah. great. Thank you, Chef. Go on, stick one here. Me and Michael will share. Yeah, Michael. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. OK. You know, Greg said to me the other day, the odd schoolboy error, and it lets me down. And that's what's happened here. So, you know, yeah, absolutely gutted. Hindsight is a wonderful thing. Les's dessert is a chocolate delice with a liquid caramel centre topped with chocolate water ganache and decorated with aerated chocolate. So what do you think was the problem then? I mean, that might... I think it's got in Yeah. One burst. It's very liquid. One burst, isn't it? Mm. What I like about this dessert is there's plenty of chocolate. But I think it, it was a bit of a challenge for the person who has made it. I mean, there's just lots of different things going on here. It's not a simple affair, is it? For somebody who's technically an amateur to yeah. go at this, they've done, he's done an incredible job. The dish is called uh, Chocolate Variations. So there's six or seven different types of preparation there. I mean, and, and for most pastry chefs would struggle with that, so I think Les has done very, very well. Hello. 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 I'm Hi. really sorry that you got to share my dessert rather than get one each. So sorry about yeah. that. Don't Thank worry, you. it's wow, perfectly OK. Good. This is a technical dessert. Yes. This is really, yes. really, really hard to get mm -hmm. done. You know, and I think you nailed it with all the techniques. Yeah, it's very advanced cookery, so you should be very proud of yourself. I think what you can take from today going from the final yep. is that, you know, disaster tests you more. Yeah. And you need to show, you know, that character in the rest of the task. Right. And learn from this. Yeah. You've got to take a lot of positives away. Yeah. Don't go away with your head down. No, go no. away with your head up, knowing well, that we are impressed. Thank you very much.
I thought I'd had a failure, but um, it seems not. I've said this all the way along, I can't believe I've got here, but I have. And what the guy said in there makes me realise that I deserve to be here. Hello. Hello. It's us again. Hello. Hello. Good, good. Hello, chefs. Well done. <laughs> hey, Janet and Les, thank you very much for giving us a wonderful experience today. I think all of you were very challenged with Steve's menu, and uh, I think technically you did really, a really good job. The food today was first class. We've eaten um, a Michelin starred meal today. It's been absolutely <laughs> fantastic. It was such good cooking. And I say this, I don't mean it in any way detrimental or rude, but surprisingly brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> well done, well done, well done. Thank, Thank, you. Well done. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. I was really surprised at the standard of the celebrities today. The level at which they cooked and the food that they delivered was excellent, and they really cared about the results. Aid on the starter was fantastic, I think. He followed the recipes really well, he was very methodical in the way he worked, and the dish that he put up at the end was fantastic. With the main course and Janet, although she would only work at her own pace, the food she put up was perfect. She did it very well, but she was late. So with the dessert, we had a little bit of a disaster. Les could have given up, he carried on, and he put up three desserts that I think he can be proud of. Great day, great food. All three of these celebs now go into the final cook-off, having learned a great deal about fine cuisine and about themselves. And now what we're going to do is they're going to find their energy, they've got to think about all they've learned through the competition, and that's going to culminate in their last three dishes. Their final cook-off. Now, I tell you what, it's going to be a ferocious fight. Next time, it's the final. Either Janet... I'm glad I've got this far, yeah. It proves I was right. <laughs> Aid. I'm ready with my magnanimous loser face, um, but I don't want to display it. Or Les. You should never say try. Always believe that you can do it. Will be crowned Celebrity Master Chef Champion.